I begin by acknowledging that we stand on the traditional lands of the, the terrible people whose land was stolen from them. I pay my respect to elders past, present, and emerging. This has always been and always will be Aboriginal land. We're all assembled here under the terrible shadow of serious torture of refugees in Australia's detention centres. Refugees have faced an all-out war by the major political parties over the last 10 years. And now we're into another election campaign with bipartisan support for the cruelty to continue. We have had many reports of sexual abuses, child abuse, self-harm attempts on Nauru and Manus. There are also many refugees in onshore detention centers who have been indefinitely detained for many years. Our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, who is the architect of Stop the Boards policy, is happy to destroy people's lives if it wins him elections. As a Tamil, over the last six years, I closely watched his rise to power. He defended the genocidal Rajapaksha regime when he was the shadow immigration minister. He turned back boards to Sri Lanka as immigration minister, regardless of the, the refugee status of passengers. And in 2014, he gave red carpet welcome to the notorious Gotabaya Rajapaksha, who oversaw killings of over 100,000 Tamils in 2009. And at the conclusion of this meeting with Gotabaya Rajapaksha, Australia gifted two naval vessels to Sri Lanka. Scott Morrison's colleagues are no different. Look at Peter Dutton and his treatment of refugees. In 2014, a Tamil refugee mother who was kept as a sex slave by the Sri Lankan army came to this country with her child seeking our protection. She was sent to Nauru and there our guards raped her. After endless protests and advice from doctors, Dutton decided, <coughs> sorry, after endless protests and advice from doctors, she was finally allowed to get treatment in the community. And last year, this woman was co contacted me and was crying over the phone because Dutton decided to cut off welfare support for her. Always remember this story. Always remember this story when you're out there talking to people about change during this election. And Dutton's treatment of the Tamil family from Bilovila is no different. Piria, her husband, and their daughters, Tarunika and Govika, were living in Bilovila when they were taken into detention after an early morning raid by uh, police, border force officers, and circle guards in March 2018. Piria and Nadez were put into uh, separate vans and driven to Gladstone Airport. Once detained in Melbourne, border force officers told them that if they didn't sign voluntary deportation uh, documents, they would be denied access to phone, and she and her husband would be separated and sent back to Sri Lanka separately. On 12th of March in 2018, they were handcuffed, separated from children, and were taken from Melbourne to Perth for deportation. Thanks to last minute legal intervention, they were taken off the plane. And for the last 14 months, this family has been in detention while they await the outcome of the legal challenges. Tarunika, who is 
uh, two years old, has now spent 60% of her life in detention. Doctors have said these children's mental health is deteriorating. And in the meantime, Peter Dutton has been splashing thousands of dollars to justify his actions, putting out media releases, lying about the reasons why Piria and, Piria and Nadeza uh, fled Sri Lanka in the first place. The brave people of Bilawila have made sure that this family get the attention that they deserve. I have been recently working on the case of another Tamil man, Rajan, who has been in detention for almost 10 years. Rajan has gone through five prime ministers and spent one-fifth of his life in detention for no crime. And now he has been diagnosed with leukemia and could die in detention. Our call for him to be released into the community has fallen on deaf ears. There are many refugees in our community living with fear of deportation. Hundreds of Tamils have been deported back to Sri Lanka in the recent months. Friends, we know nothing has changed for Tamils in Sri Lanka, although the Sri Lankan government tells us Although not just the Sri Lankan government, but uh, the Australian government tells us it's safer for Tamils to go back. A military occupation of the Tamil ha homeland is one of the heaviest in the world. The Sri Lankan government is using this power to forcibly change the demographics of the island. And the Australian government is happy with this process as long as it serves Australian big business interests. Last month, Australia held its largest ever naval exercise with the Sri Lankan government. The Australian government continues to donate military equipment to the Sri Lankan government. We don't know how deep the relationship gets. In the coming weeks, months and years, we need to work together to stop deportations of all refugees to danger. We must bring an end to criminal practice of locking up people in offshore detention centers and change other criminal policies of our government. These people are victims of war that too often the Australian government is responsible for. Progressive forces in this country must show leadership on this very important issue. The trade union movement that is capable of mobilizing hundreds of thousands of people to change the rules also has the power to bring an end to the cruelty towards refugees. Yeah. Our government says people are against refugees, but that's not the case. People of Bilawila has shown us the way. We have seen workers taking actions in their workplaces. We have seen community actions. We need to build on this. We need to build a movement that the politicians, the media, and the elite institutions cannot ignore. An unstoppable force of people who will bring a government to its knees if it ignores the will of the people. Thank you.